Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be upgrading this awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. It's gonna get a new CPU. We've seen this CPU before but we're gonna be putting it over in this server and um, first you're gonna get a little bit of a rant about CPUs because it's it matters what CPU you put in a server and it's not necessarily the fastest CPU you want in your server it can be the best CPU for the job that the server is gonna perform some CPUs um, are, are to be used in multi-threaded applications where it will be so awesome to have as many cores as possible and it might not be as important how fast each core actually is then there's other applications where you might not want that you might want as few cores as possible but you want the cores to run as fast as possible and um, this is really very much used in applications where there is a per core license like if you're running an Oracle database or a Microsoft SQL SQL um, enterprise database those are bloody expensive so if you can save two cores you almost made your paycheck for the year back and these databases are used in systems that you cannot get around when you get into the enterprise stuff where people's life are at stake some very big software companies they say it's um, it's SQL or it's it's Oracle or we won't support this and you can go tell your boss a million times that it can run on something else he knows that if this system fails you're both fired so the awesome Lenovo X3650 model 5 can use the whole range of, of the E5 2600 version 4 3 2 and one I think series so that series ranges from four cores and all the way up to I think 18 cores maybe 22 I forget um, I don't have any of those but right now I have an E5 2620 this is a version 4 and it's running at 2.1 gigahertz it can boost all the way up to 3 gigahertz it has eight cores 16 threads it's kind of an entry level it's a good cpu it's it's above entry level if you um if you get into the e5 26 series and it starts with a zero and then nine or six or something after that well that's the really entry level that's the cpus that wasn't really very good so intel make them bottom of the line cpus and you get those if you get a really discounted price on a server so I'm gonna be replacing that but if I was to run Microsoft SQL or an Oracle database on this server I wanted to um, to save on my licensing I would take this CPU out it has eight cores and I would put in one of these uh, this is an it's an e5 26 37 version 4 this CPU has four cores. It um, runs at 3.5 gigahertz. So it's giving all the power to each of those cores. So if you were to get one of those licenses, well, you would get the maximum amount of speed out of each of those licenses. And um, instead of that eight core CPU that is in there, you would go for two of them. So you would have that. You might not want to put those in one server because if that one server crashes, you might want to have one of these each in two servers just for the redundancy. I was actually thinking about putting those in my server here, but yeah, the one that we are putting in is about as fast as both of these together. So uh, we are actually putting in one that is faster. That would also be way more expensive in licensing. But, but let's cut the RAM and let's get to the swapping CPUs. Here is of course the awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. Let's uh, go into the computer and shut it down. So here are the three CPUs that we have just been talking about. This is the one that I have in my system now. You can kind of see that's a $360 CPU. Um, it uses 85 watts, uh, 2.1 gigahertz. It boosts up to about 3 gigahertz 
and it has a single oh it has the score for the total cpu and it has a single thread rating of about 1547 so um, that's what you will get out of a single thread uh, single thread rating yeah and then this is the cpu that we are putting in we're putting in the intel cn e5 2687 w it's a version 4 it runs at 3 gigahertz and it boosts up to 3.5 gigahertz it's a 12 core cpu it uses a heck lot more power 160 watts also the price of running this is about double yikes uh, same production year it has a single each core is about 1890 and it is just below 20,000 in this 19.8 then this other one which would be really good for a SQL database or an Oracle database well it um, 3.5 gigahertz it to boost up to about 3.7 it has four cores uh, it needs two logical they, but they all have that it uses in the middle somewhere 135 watts pretty expensive every year and it has the overall highest single threaded count over 2000 down here and 10,500 ish uh, total CPU thank you so I'm shutting down Proxmox here let's shut this down Are you sure yes there that is shutting down we can go up to the host here and as soon as that virtual machine has shut down over there it just did we can go and shut it down there yes it's pretty fast at shutting down I must give it that oh we didn't see the CPU is here uh, right there so the server is only ready for one socket so right now that is what we're gonna be doing so last year for my birthday I, I got a new PC it's not an I didn't get a new PC I, I, I upgraded my PC so um, here it is I'm actually not using this at the moment it, it's a I like the case it's nothing special but it, it has some custom labels um, I attend the computer party twice a year every year and um, well someone made this cool stuff for one of those computer parties so yeah that is on there but it has that E5 2687 version 4 underneath this huge cooler so um, do I remember how to take that off I'm gonna I see that I need a very long screwdriver okay had to move my lazy ass out into the car to get the long screwdriver let's see if I remember this there there's the CPU I managed to get grease on me eh, do I, yeah I have to release that crap as well to get that out of there that's irritating so to get the CPU out I have to remove this brackets these brackets as well because they're covering up the arms to release the CPU okay I'm not gonna bother you with that I don't think well, I filmed this at my birthday and at the point I, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to put in an NVMe drive in here. I later did because of comments that I got telling me that it was okay that this system motherboard could do an NVMe drive and I put one in. So down here I have the, uh, what is that? It's a 500 gigabyte EVO 970. So and that has been working great it's a really good performance so i could can highly recommend those but now i have done so that i can get the cpu out i'm going to get some toilet paper and clean it up maybe i'll take it out first looks like the heating compound has been doing a really good job there it has covered everything uh, so cool I'll clean that off we're gonna put on some new when we put it in the server instead okay so we have the CPU out be careful not to drop it 
Um, yeah, this isn't Linus tech tip, so we'll try and keep it safe. By the way, I'm going to this LTX 19 over in Canada in the uh, middle of next month. Oh, no, at almost the end of next month. So um, I will probably go see uh, this Linus dude. Um, I, I, have, I just have a normal ticket, so I'm just going to be regularly attending it. But I hope that some of you guys um, are going there. Uh, come and say hi. Okay, so I was just about to skip this part because I thought, well, so many of you have probably seen me change CPU a dozen times by now. But um, then I came to realize uh, we have never done it on the M5. We have done a lot of other things, but we have actually never changed the CPU. So let's just take all of it. So I have removed the cables on the back and the server goes out and it stops right there that's fine so cover off a little bit uh, bigger job than normal because i have this graphics card in here and that's in the way for taking off that um, plastic thingy here and underneath the plastic thingy well there is the cpu get off the plastic thingy so there we are. I have never had these off, so um, yeah. I think we just, everything is off. Anti-static rest band on. Um, someone in the comments was telling me in some old video that, well, it doesn't work anything because you haven't grounded it. Well, as long as I'm connected to the server, I'm not gonna be able to build any electric charge compared to the components that I'm messing with. So yeah, it does actually work. There is the stock CPU. Okay, it's exactly the same system as um, M4. This one is a little different though. So let's have this out. There. I don't like to have these sockets exposed for too long because bad things can happen. When you do that, you can drop something onto them and there is like, 1300 pins just waiting to get bent so we're gonna remove this very quickly and we're gonna put the next one in almost as quickly there and i have just wiped it off in my armpit so everything is good put that down close that and we will put those little pins down again there and there okay so now the new cpu is in we just need some thermal paste on that and we should be good to go. I'm gonna be putting on the exact right amount. There we are. And I'll have to clean this off and then put that back on. Okay, that is now cleaner. So we're gonna just put that back on. There we are. Cool. CPU installed. Awesome. Let's put that in. So with that in place, we are ready to put in the, the graphics card and the 10G networking card as well. So let's get rid of that thing, put that out of the way. Okay, that will be okay. We are ready to put the lid on. There we are. On the top of the server, there is all these explanations of how to replace the CPU here. There is also how the memory goes in here. Put the server back in and we're gonna power it and we're gonna see if everything is as expected. I sure do hope so. I have mounted the cables back here and the server is it powered on by itself. So um, yeah, let's go see if it sees everything. So with that out of the way, um, I want to mount this Intel Xeon 2620 version 4 in my computer here. I have already popped it in because I don't like these sockets to be exposed. So we're just going to be locking it down here. Oh yeah, see how that could have killed everything on the wrong day. And we are going to be putting on the exact amount of right cooling thinkies on here 
there. Absolutely 100% perfect. And if you disagree, that's because you don't know diddly squat about this. Um, yeah, I have the cables in. Oh, I forgot to put in those mounting crap. Ah. There, stay there. Okay, I forgot these. How did they go in again? There. Okay. So. So the PC is good to go. So here we are at the computer. The system has powered up. Let's check the CPU. We have a three gigahertz CPU in there. If we click that get some events there are no events but we get some hardware information and it tells us down here that we are dealing with intel xeon e5 2687w version 4 3 gigahertz processor we have 12 cores 226 kilobytes of second layer cache and we have what is that 30 megabytes of third level cache awesome so let's see what proxmox says let's go down to the host and get a summary it should see exactly the same thing. Yeah, it sees that E526 blah, blah, blah. It's all good. So um, quite an improvement there. Also this virtual machine that I have running in here, well, that has gotten a new CPU as well. So even though I haven't raised the number of cores that this uh, virtual machine has, it should now have received about 80% more power. Awesome, new CPU. Um, swap those two CPUs around so that I have a slower workstation. I'm not using it right now. Uh, and I have a way faster server, which I am actually using. Um, so awesome win-win. I would expect that I've gained about 80% more speed on my server. I'm probably gonna lose some of that when I'm gonna be popping in the second CPU because these CPUs are bloody expensive. And this one was given to me by Eros. Uh, where I did some videos and they kind of had that one laying around in a drawer uh, collecting dust and um, Yeah, I got that one. Thank you very much to Eros. Just a reminder. I will be at LTX 19 in Canada on I think I believe it's the 26th of July Should I check that? Maybe I should probably should check that yeah I'll be there uh, on the 26th, 27th, 28th, uh, 29th, and then I'll be going back home. So if you should just happen to be going there as well, I would be more than happy to say hello. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again, and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.